The following interview was conducted with James S. Peters for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on uh, Thursday, April 17, 2008 in room 263, Stewart Center. Also sitting in is Carl Snow, the Digital Initiatives Librarian, and this is a telephone interview. Welcome. Tell us where you were born in your early years and your parents. I was born in Ashdown, Arkansas, in New River County in 1917, the 11th of May. Where did you go to school? Tell us about grade school. Very good. Now, you served during World War II. We, uh, you were in the service? Yes, I was. Uh -huh. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I can tell you a little bit about that. Uh, I served in the United States Navy. Once they integrated the Navy and allowed Negroes to serve in what they call general service, I went in right after I graduated from the Hartford Seminary with a master's degree in psychology and married just before we were in the service. It's been all of my years in the service, which is three years at the Naval Training. 
radio station, Radio Illinois, as a psychologist. I also was rated as a quartermaster navigator from the School of Navigation, but my rating was changed to specialist teacher psychologist while I was in the Navy and I worked in the neuropsychiatric unit and the special training unit at Great Lakes, which I was one of the organizers of special training unit and drew the research that I was able to do uh, in recruit training. So we were able to integrate the Navy. The Navy integrated in 1944 and the other services did not integrate until 1948. And some of the research that I did was responsible for the Bureau of Naval Personnel integrating the Navy. I served all three years in the Navy at Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, now, af after the you got out of the Navy, can you tell us what you did next then? I'd be happy to. Okay. Because my wife had taught chemistry uh, at Virginia State College in Petersburg, Virginia, and was uh, on leave from Virginia State College attending the University of Chicago. When I got out of service, I enrolled in the University of Chicago for graduate study and started my PhD uh, in psychology at the University of Chicago and got a second master's degree from the Illinois Institute of Technology in 
were planted. And we sit down one for a time for our spirit. We had very few African Americans that could do at the time. Mm-hmm. And I think that was about, about as well as about one of three, uh, three or four doing regular work in psychology at the time. And there were others that I worked with, especially at undergraduate, where I was one of their counselors for uh, members of the athletic teams. Uh, one day I remember so well, Lamar Lundy, who became a last time Purdue player and uh, pro football player. So it was just a wonderful time for us at Purdue. We got our help. Now, after you received your degree, tell us, what, what did you do next then? I received my degree uh, in 1955, and my wife received her second master's degree. She had a master's degree in chemistry in 1955, and we, we marched together uh, with her, a couple of other friends, and from Purdue, I was able to go back to New England, where I went into service from New England, to Springfield College. My wife was able to uh, help me get the job in Springfield. We didn't want to go back south. We didn't want to realize children in the south of side. And I was able to go to Springfield College to Help set up and head up the new graduate program in rehabilitation counseling as a member of the psychology department. I was uh, Springfield's first African American professor, and after one year there, uh, I had several job offers. And including a deanship at St. Augustine College in Florida, North Carolina, which was the Episcopal College. We were Episcopalians at that time. I had joined the Episcopal Church with my wife and her family at that time. And I had an offer at Boston University as a first professor for rehabilitation. And I offered to become the state director of vocational rehabilitation for Connecticut. And as a veteran at the time of uh, Connecticut, World well, well, War II veteran from Connecticut, and had graduated from the Hartford Seminary uh, for my first master's degree before I went into the service in psychology. And I took the job as State Director of Vocational Rehabilitation for Connecticut and as a Social Commissioner of Education uh, for Connecticut. And during the period of 25 years in that position, I also was the adjunct professor of psychology at the University of Hartford and the University of Connecticut part-time board, and just a part-time consultant when practicing as a psychologist. And when I retired from uh, that job, I was in full-time practice of psychology in six states, full-time licensed in six states, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York State, New Hampshire, California, and uh, my my family, my mother and the rest of the family, with the exception of my father, had moved to California from Louisiana. And so Berkeley, California, at that time, was my second home. So... Uh, um, 
night for them to know that I have had during my uh, working career and educational career about four or five fellowships. The first came when I was at Southern University. I became an All-American football player and had a full fellowship my senior year. They paid for everything. After that time, I'd just been paying my family, paying half of my room and board, et cetera. And I was a varsity football player and captain of our football team and made All-American and received this fellowship. I've been a, something of a good athlete in high school, all state and captain of my team. And uh, very active in extracurricular affairs, both in high school and college. My next, uh, I got out of college. I taught uh, social studies uh, in Natchitoches, Louisiana, which is located on Cane River in Northwest Louisiana. Natchitoches Parish Training School is my first job. And help with the, the band and the newspaper. I'd been in newspaper business for my first effort out of college. I was a publisher of a weekly newspaper in Monroe, Louisiana, before I took the teaching job in Nexus. And before the year had passed, I was granted a fellowship to go to Atlanta University for the summer of graduate work. And that was my second fellowship from the General Education Board. And before the year was over, uh, the second year was over, I was at the Hartford Seminary to do my uh, graduate work for the master's degree in social psychology. That was my second, second, my third, third uh, fellowship came from the Veterans Administration to go to Purdue, go to Purdue, and help set up the counseling psychology program, which was in the, in with the clinical psychology program. And uh, that was my third one, the fourth one. And I had fellowship when I was directed at the state program in rehabilitation for Connecticut. I was proud of this grant and a fellowship uh, from ACW Health Education and Welfare uh, to Harvard University School of Medicine during my sabbatical leave to do research in Western Europe, looking at the rehabilitation programs in Western Europe and Yugoslavia, which I did in 16 Western European countries. Um, that was my fourth fellowship. And then in 56, I 56, pardon me, in uh, 76, I received a fellowship to duplicate that study of rehabilitation in Western Europe, in Western uh, Africa, West Africa, which I had did in six West African countries. And after that, before the year was over, before the I was invited to come to Illinois, Illinois State University at Carbondale, because Carbondale, Illinois, as a distinguished visiting professor to help set up a doctoral program in rehabilitation of which I had developed a research project for. And my wife was given an associate uh, visiting professorship, and they established this distinction. 
was the, that was the first distinguished visiting professorship at that school, and you were you were the recipient. How did you get that? Oh, <laughs> yes, I'm so, well, I, I do my research. <laughs> I do background for sure. <laughs> you're great. You're great. And you remember up to that up to that time, so no, no, had been a very much a segregated school. But things had changed here in Southern Illinois. I was just delighted because we, we had friends there you know, who came to Chicago to study. And uh, they had been segregated against Canadian, even the dining hall, up until the civil rights movement. And here it is, the president, the dean, uh, we, it was just a half a time for us. And at that time, <laughs> it was just wonderful. And they wanted me to stay, but I couldn't stay. I uh, got an education leave from the State Department of Education to spend a year there. So it was about five fellowships through the years that I've been able to get. It's just, for me, it's just wonderful. That's I never, I never even dreamed that it was the kind of thing was happening. Having grown up in a segregated world, Louisiana, Arkansas, but everything was changing, and the South was just changing. Oh boy! When I think about it, <laughs> so really that 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 uh, just I didn't, didn't cover I cover everything, but I, mostly. I want to talk a few about you. Got so many honors and awards and a list of publications. But you were inducted into the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame. You learned about that too. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, that's fair. And also, first. and you were a representative to uh, at the World War II Memorial in Washington D.C. You represented Connecticut. It's those <laughs> nice honors. And I'm the founder of the Black Civil Rights Organization. I'm very close, and we still meet every summer. Very good. Every summer. And I was not in 205, 10 of us were selected by the governor and our committee to be the first inductees into Connecticut Hall, Veterans Hall of Fame. And the, the former President Bush was among the 10. Not the present one, his father, who was uh, a Navy veteran also, aviator. Yes, that was quite an honor. Right. So, now I've had, I am a Hall of Famer in three places. First, Connecticut Hall of Fame. Second, West Hartford, Connecticut Hall of Fame. I went into service from West Hartford, Connecticut. And third, and I just love this thing, Southern University Athletic Hall of Fame. And I'm also an honorary citizen of New Orleans and I'm an honorary mayor of Baton Rouge. Super play. Very good. <laughs> You're getting me a cup of coffee. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, are you still, what are you doing? Are you still uh, in touch uh, with the students, too? Do you keep in touch? You'd be surprised. One of my former students from the University of Hartford, who was a graduate student now, came by Monday, called me, and came by Monday a week ago and took me to lunch. And he lives in <laughs> Bloomfield, Connecticut. And I hadn't seen him I hadn't seen him in about a, two or three years. He surprised me. You know, we get the stage my students fly around there some are called every now and then. Oh, some may come back, but so many of them are scattered. I am University of Hartford, first African American professor. I'm that young. I was 
there at uh, founding of the university. When it was first founded, I was one of the persons to to talk there because I taught for Hillview College, which combined with the hard art school and hard music school to make the university of at Hartford. So I taught there every semester for 25 years. Even when I was on sabbatical, I would come back and teach. I never missed a beat there. In the University of Connecticut, my wife, although she was chronically ill for 23 years, I have to rehabilitate her first. She had tuberculosis and had to be uh, in a sanatorium for about nine months. And uh, the tenth year after she was cured from tuberculosis, she had breast cancer, which she survived for 13 years, all together for 22 years. Uh, she was chronically ill, but she survived it and went back to school and got a doctor from where Harvard. When she was at Harvard, my son, my son was at Harvard in architecture, in the master's in architecture. I was at Harvard during my postdoctorate in the medical school, and she was at Harvard getting a doctorate in human development. So one year, we were all, all three of us there together, which was a phenomenon. <laughs> and when I think about it, I have to be reminded of that. But she, <laughs> Marie Ferguson Peters is her name, Dr. Marie Ferguson Peters, uh, was the first African American to be on a tenure track at the University of Connecticut here in stores. And when she died, they named the street for her here off campus, off campus. And Marie, Dr. Marie F. Peters Drive, no, Dr. Marie F. Peters Place is the name of, name of the street. And <clears throat> about every other year, there's a colloquium uh, on campus in her honor. And the one this year will be next month in her honor, which I have to set up. I have to set it up. Good. Any other reminiscences that you'd like to share with us? I'd like to tell you about my children and grandchildren. That would be fine. <laughs> My son Jim was my first, our first born. He was born in Chicago right after World War II. That's why I had to, Marie and I both had to drop out of Chicago, University of Chicago. I was just going part time when she had to drop out. But he was born in 1946. I was out of service in 1947. He started his schooling at the University of Chicago nursing school and University of Chicago Laboratory School where I started elementary work, University of Chicago Lab. And he went to the conduct school when we were at Purdue. And yes, enjoyed it very much. City boy, got there for country boys. And from there, Jim went to, when we came back to Connecticut, he went to the Kingswood Boys Preparatory School, Conduct Preparatory School, and from there to Yale, and a bachelor's degree in pre-architecture, and there to Harvard, Graduate School of Design in Architecture, and after working as an architect, he came back to school and got another master's degree in management from MIT, Sloan Graduate School of Management. And after work and, and marriage, it was not for now. He's now finishing up his PhD in ecology at the University of Massachusetts. He's doing his dissertation now, and he li he lives with me after my wife died. He came home and lived with it, and he's done graduate work at the University of Connecticut. My older daughter, who's also born in Chicago. Uh, the, the line in 
Hester, you know, Chicago, uh, Donna Marie, she started her, <laughs> she, she was uh, in a nursing school mm-hmm. where I could do West Lafayette to do. And we lived there, and she went from there to the Rimbrook School in West Hartford, Connecticut, a private school. And after that, the Knoxville School for Girls in Knoxville, Massachusetts, and then to um, a school in Vermont. Yeah. 
girl I just married last summer to a young man who's getting this best PhD in physics, and they're getting her to go to the University of Iowa, where he has an apartment. So, by and large, oh, my darling mother just died in Berkeley about uh, four or five years ago at 102. She's a nurse for 40 years. And my father died in 1944 while I was in the Navy. And uh, he was a business man and also was a factory worker. He learned his trade at Grammar, which was Grammar Institute, which is now Grammar University. And my mother was a graduate of Miss. Uh, oh, goodness. Graduate of uh, girls' school in Washington, Arkansas, which became a part of Arkansas State uh, University. And she became a nurse, as we see, for 40 years. She nursed in Arkansas, Louisiana, and California. Where she served her last nurse stint as the first African American that the nurse at Head General Hospital. This was during World War II. So, by and large, uh, it's been a, been a good a good ride, in spite of some of the bumps, been a real good ride. Yes. Can I ask you, do you, if in retrospect, do you have an out, uh, could you name an outstanding event? Does that, something come to, to that you'd like to share with us? An uh, outstanding event? Yes. The outstanding event was at Purdue, <laughs> which, okay. which was the best rescued me from the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they took me in and said, I didn't have to do anything but research. But I still took courses at Purdue and registered and had to bring my whole family down instead of going back to work uh, while doing my dissertation for the VA at home, VA hospital and all that. Yeah, it was an eye opener on that kind of reception I read from Purdue. It was because trying to, trying to go to school part time with a family and working full time, you just, it's very, very difficult. And that's what I was trying to do. Yes. And Purdue. <laughs> The, the strain that they, the dean and the chairperson of the department read it right at me. They said, Mr. Peters, if you go back to Chicago and go to finish up your work there, you'll never finish. you get your family here and come on this second year and finish up, and you will finish up. Oh, they read the attic to me. <laughs> That's what we know how it is in Chicago. <laughs> they did. That was just nice. I did it. I hope not. Because I never gave me that to get back, back to school full time. And they, oh, it was that that was pretty a big thing for me. Yes. Mr. Peters, this I want to thank you very, very much. The opportunity to interview you, I really appreciate it. And uh, we will be sending you a copy of the transcript after we get it for you to look at. And mm -hmm. I want to wish you a very good day. But you didn't ask me about my publications. Oh, did you want to make some? Yes. Well, I, I know you have, I said, you have an extensive. Do you want to highlight some of those for us? Well, my 26th book oh. is coming out this, this summer. Very good, okay. And it's, the title is Filling in the Gaps. Filling in the Gaps. Very, that's, I hope you're going to be, you'll send me a copy of it, I hope. You're sending me, did you get any of my, you have some of my other books? 
I, I've got some of the list of your publications. Yes, that's very nice. And some of my books that the uh, right. students uh, have, really. That's what I understand. Yes. But you know, I'm working on another book about my wife. Well, very good. It's hard, it's hard to write this one, but it's, I'm, I'm trying to get some of that out on my strength. I'm going to work on this book. Okay. That's but uh, if you're at the center, uh, Catherine, mm -hmm. may I call you Catherine? Call please, you Jim. Please do. If you would send me a list of the books that you have, I'll send you a list of the books that you don't have. I mean, not a list, I'll send the books. All right. I will make. I will work on that list, and I'll be in touch. And congratulations on this project. Thank you very much, and you've made a wonderful contribution, and we appreciate that. Now you have a good day. Uh, okay. I, I'm alive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll be 91 next month. Okay. I will send a birthday card. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank congratulations you. Congratulations on this project. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Bye bye now. You're more than welcome. <laughs>